So, how does it feel to be behind your desk again? A heck of a lot better than it felt being behind bars. And what of the mysterious Batgirl? Who is she, and where has she vanished to? Any thoughts? I... As far as I'm concerned, she's as welcome in Gotham City as the Batman. She was my daughter. My daughter. Have you ever gotten a heart attack as a child from a cartoon? Yeah, Over the Edge did that for me. Something, something, something changing your mind. Something, something. It begins with Batman and Robin running from the police. Gordon knows he's bruised. The cave is being turned to rubble. The Batmobile is annihilated. And as they reach the Batboat, Alfred is arrested to ensure their escape. Dick saves Bruce and Tim and is in disbelief over what's happened. I'll never forget. I can see it as clearly as my parents' murder. What had ignited all of this was that Scarecrow killed Barbara, and she died in her father's arms, calling for him in her last breath. Lie still. Call an ambulance! Dad. Barbara? In rage and confusion, Gordon turns against Batman. Bollock calls him a murderer and is ready to arrest him. So Tim and Bruce are on the run now. Over the Edge is the everything goes wrong episode. A brutal and bleak ending to a friendship where the danger Gordon always was is fully realized. He wasn't just a political puppet for Batman's operations. He was the very reason why his operations could work at all. Like a fool, I allowed you to run wild on your private crusade. A psychotic misfit playing masked hero. However, it's also just a fear toxin episode for Barbara, which must have happened around here. So this episode operates on two levels. As Barbara's imagination, it's a metaphor for a traumatic breaking point. And I do mean trauma and not nightmare, because dreams can't simulate things that hasn't happened. It's why when you fall to your death in a dream, you usually wake up. Or in my case, clip through the floor and see a PS4 error screen. Fuck! As a result, the creativity and construction of the events in this episode is largely Barbara's imagination. Her using her memories of people, places and knowledge of how they act to construct a possible future that follows her death. Of course, what I just said is paradoxical because one of the symptoms of trauma is the direct inability to imagine the future because the past is too painful to be used as psychic material for one's imagination. Does the hurt ever go away? I wish I could say yes. But that paradox is precisely what the Scarecrow gas is mining in Barbara's brain hole. Your deepest fear brought to life by the Scarecrow. He gassed you right before we nailed him. Therefore, there's also this meta element here. Both us and Barbara are the audience. She wakes up when she literally screams no at the episode. No. We have direct insight into her own private predictions of the future, the story where she always contextualizes her life every time she dons the cowl, where the dangerous future of Batgirl is very much the inevitability of these two fathers going to war. Or if you're not overthinking things, Barbara's vision is also a framing device for an Elseworld tale where Batman's own status quo is turned against him. Harvey wants to catch him with full force, but Gordon knows that won't work. Instead, he goes after Bruce Wayne specifically. Jim, believe me. I know how you feel. You can't. He caused him, discovering his secret identity using Starter's computer and possibly some of his DNA in a bedroom. Ten minutes on Barbara's computer told me everything. It's important to know that the way the episode is structured, the central focus is on Bruce and Gordon's relationship. The story deliberately doesn't open with Barbara's death, but with the hook of them finally against each other. Therefore, her death is instead a memory and serves as an interruption and break from the chase. And if you treat this as insight directly into her, then Barbara sees herself as an interruption in their story. Another tragedy for Bruce. I'm sorry. The end of Jim's career, a bomb in the laps of both men. Unfortunately, she would also eventually sit on Bruce's lap. Do you mind? Sorry. Furthermore, it's also important to point out that Barbara's story as Batgirl started when her father was framed. She donned the cow not to serve Batman, but to serve Jim. But you have to come to the rally. The public respects you. If they see you there, they'll know Dad's innocent. Sorry, but there's more to this than a simple frame up. And I'm not going to find out by appearing at rallies. Therefore, psychologically, the story of Batgirl was born out of a daughter's love for her father and borrowing the brand of another. It was always authored by these two men. Either way, hilariously, Dick has no part in this. Dick is shocked. Everything gone. Just like that. 
but he's not that broken up about the girl he's been in love with since college being f***ing brutally killed. Instead, he's the one keeping spirits high. He volunteers to get stuff back from his loft to help everyone. So either Barbara has a very high opinion of her ex or a very low one. There's room for two on that thing. Some other time. Regardless, poor dick. He even gets arrested. Batman's spirit is now broken. He tells his second son to leave him as he drifts into the shadows of uncertainty. The DA wants Gordon to step down because he's too close to the case. We've looked the other way before, but now that everyone knows your daughter was part of his team, what are you saying? Batman's old enemies all want financial compensation from Bruce Wayne. Every possible thing falls apart. But in this no-win situation, Gordon uses his remaining time as commissioner to strike a deal with Bane, so he can use Barbara's funeral as bait to apprehend Batman, who's then swung around like the little girl in Matilda. He's surrounded, but Jim wants Bruce alive so he can be thrown into Arkham. Alive to run away in Arkham, surrounded by the monsters he's created. Poetic, but no. For Jim, Batman is the last case he needs to deal with. However, Bane rejects Gordon, throwing him away, but Batman intervenes and reaches out. Please, Jim. For Barbara. There's a part of Barb who knows things could work out, where perhaps her memory can provide love, not tragedy. But this is a dark simulation, so Bane in his last breath throws the signal and they both fall to their death. No. So when Barbara wakes up, she can't take the fear anymore. The whole episode was a traumatic rupture, which made her career as bad girl entirely unacceptable in her sense of life story because as long as she puts on the costume, there is no future but the one she saw. Therefore, after a dinner with her father, she sits with him. This is important. It won't be easy for you to hear, but it's about a job I took on recently. But through euphemisms, Gordon avoids her announcement. He says, All you need to know is I love you. All of you. And that is all I have to say on the subject. Barbara knows that Jim knows. And they hug. She's got his permission. The true revelation was that all these fears were unfounded. If she were to die, Gordon would be sad. But he would also be proud of her because he knew... He always knew. And had already come to terms with all this with a smile. Barbara's two self-narratives were never in conflict. They're always synchronized. But more importantly, Jim doesn't give Barbara permission, he gives her ownership. Her vision may have started from the point of view of her two fathers, but it ends with her. She's not an interruption in other people's story, she is the story. And that's how the trauma of this episode is assimilated. The inability to appropriate the experience she just had is overcame when she realizes there's a hidden continuity of resilience the whole time, therefore making the events we just saw unconvincing now. I just got you to stop treating me like a kid. And now you're trying to marry me off. <clears throat> Sweetheart, you're capable of making your own decisions. You don't need me to approve or even acknowledge them. And in this case, I can't. All you need to know is I love you. All of you. So that was the Over the Edge video. Uh, I don't plan on doing every single episode of Batman the Anime Series or the new adventures, but there's a couple more I really want to do. I really want to do Scratch My Back. Obviously I have to do Mad Love, that's definitely happening, and I'm going to turn that into like a trilogy, where the first one is on Mad Love, the original episode, then it will be on DCEU Harley Quinn, and then do the Harley Quinn Animate Show. So there's like a Harley Quinn super trilogy of essays. I also really want to do Sub-Zero and Robin's Reckoning. But yeah, anyways, special thanks to everyone on Patreon. You guys rock, guys. Especially now that uh, electricity prices in the UK has more than doubled. <laughs>
Batgirl, sheesh. What's next, weasel woman? Like I said, expected you two minutes ago.